But Jeepers, I found this wonderful little tiny community in western Baltimore County, still rural, where I could afford a house. And right on the Patapsco River, and it was fantastic. It was 30 minutes from my house to my office at UMBC. So I moved in, went to the community association meeting to find out who my neighbors were. Um, and uh, I hear this talk about the Nike missile base. What are we going to do about it? And I said, what? And, they, and, and I found out that I had moved me with, with um, experience in doing nuclear history, with a knowledge of the weapons, a knowledge of space and knowledge of the missiles, and a pretty good command on history, uh, I find out I'm living a mile and a half oh, from an actual Nike missile base wow. on Hernwood Road. And I said, oh, this is fantastic. So I got some grad students together. And uh, we did a project um, on the history of the granite Nike missile base because there were at least five or six in the area. You know, there was one in Phoenix. There was one by the Bay Bridge. Um, there uh, were other locations. Um, and we uh, looked in the records of the Army Corps of Engineers for the construction records because the Nike missile bases were built in the early 1950s by the Corps of Engineers. And uh, on Hernwood Road, a typical Nike site, uh, there's a uh, launch site that had the missiles. And about two miles down the road, there's a radar and command control site where they would control it. They needed to have at least a couple of miles between the missile launchers and the radars so that the radars could look at the missiles and follow them after they had been launched. So they put all the radars together on Hernwood Road near Granite Road and then they put a typical 16 missile battery underground mm -hmm. facility a couple of miles up Hernwood Road towards Marriottsville. Um, and, of course, the uh, initial Nike missiles were re regular fragmentation shrapnel warheads with high explosive. Yeah. Um, Nike uh, uh, Ajax. Uh, and they uh, were designed to be fired at Russian bombers, yeah. whom people oh. presume the Soviets would be flying their bombers, and that they would make landfall somewhere over the eastern shore. And that as they came over, uh, some of the Russian bombers would head to D.C. in order to nuke it. Mm -hmm. And some of the Russian bombers would be headed to nuke downtown Baltimore, would be ground zero, because there were enough defense facilities and enough interest in us as a target. So near as I could tell, the Nikes were to take off from Phoenix and Granite and below their warheads with the Russian bombers, some are over Parkville. Near as I could tell, that's about where they were going to drop the, <laughs> the Russian nukes and the shrapnel and, and all that, but you know, it would, it would keep them from getting in. And then later, of course, they um, went to Nike Hercules, mm -hmm. which was uh, a, um, I think it was a W80. Uh, W80 fission warhead. Hmm. Uh, not hydrogen fusion, of course, just plain old fission, but that's nuke enough. And so the Nike missile base uh, that I was living near was a place where live nuclear weapons were kept. And they were ready to bring those babies up from underground and fire them uh, to engage Soviets flying their bombers over us. And the, my neighbors, many of my neighbors in Granite that I was getting to know, the older guys had been Nike missile men oh, wow. in the 50s and 60s, and they had worked at the missile base. And of course, their wives and kids and their families all still lived in Granite. So we, we spent a year or two doing this. We did a lot of oral history. We did 
research, we found the old commander of the base, we found uh, a lot of the people who had worked at the Nike base and brought them in for interviews, and we did um, video tours of both sites, the site with all the radar towers, they've since been removed. But we did the site with the radar towers and the buildings uh, at the command control site, and then we were able, we couldn't go into the missile magazine underneath Hernwood Road or underneath uh, uh, next to Hernwood Road because in 1974 when they shut the base down they had turned off the pumps and water had intruded and filled mm -hmm. it. But the um, launcher rails and all the claptrap and the elevators and everything else are still there. That's beautifully preserved because a Maryland agency that trains police has the facility and they maintain the buildings very well. That's great. Um, and uh, some parts of it are crumbling. But we have, so we have uh, had my students uh, and we do interviews and we write up reports and we did a bunch of presentations to the community. Um, so we're in Granite and we're giving our presentation. And uh, we say, and of course, uh, eight of the missiles had W-80 uh, fission warheads, nuclear, uh, blah, blah, blah. And I look out in the audience, and some of the wives are elbowing their husbands. Oh, nice. You never told me that. <laughs> the missile men, this is one of the things about classified material. They, read you the riot act and they scare the heck out of you about all the penalties for revealing classified information when you get a clearance. But after you leave, your clearance is over, nobody ever tells you when your information is declassified. So most people go through life afterwards not knowing whether what they know can ever be said legally again. Mm -hmm. And as a person who's had interviewed in classified and unclassified projects, sometimes you surprise the heck out of, an, out of an interview subject and they say, you can't, I can't talk about that. And I say, look, it was declassed 10 years ago. And they go, really? It's open now? And they didn't know. But it was so funny to see the wives well, in Granite who had no idea that every day their husbands were going into the missile base and they did not know that those were nukes sitting in the middle of their community. And I imagine, you know, the same for Phoenix mm -hmm. uh, wow. and, and elsewhere. Wow. So were, were, the, um, were these 90 sites of missiles ever used? No. Uh, and I have got to qualify that a little bit. There were um, 400 Nike missile bases around the country. Mm -hmm. And there's one beautifully preserved that you can visit, the last, the only one left, no, okay. SF-88 in San Francisco. Um, those in the United States, on the continental United States, were never fired in anger. Mm -hmm. There were some accidents. Um, Fort Meade, accidentally launched a Nike without the warhead, with a training warhead on it, an inert warhead, which went from Fort Meade, crossed over the Beltway, and landed by Halethorpe, uh, where the old Carling Brewery used to be. And it's covered in Baltimore Sun and, and everything. Made a pretty good crater. Uh, but it was it was in a there's just a um, no explosive at all okay, other than the propulsion. Okay. But that that was that was just so a no one was injured, glitch. Right? Nobody okay. was injured. Okay. Uh, it's pretty embarrassing. Sadly, uh, one missile exploded underground in New Jersey in a Nike base, and chain reaction set off the fuel in a bunch of other missiles, and um, the. Uh, the warheads weren't on them at the time, but people died underground mm -hmm. at the Nike wow. base in New Jersey. And there are a few other incidents where things happened, um, but never fired in defense, never fired in anger. 
Yeah. So is that the reason why they're just kind of um, breaking, uh, what do you call that, dismantling them, like taking them apart or even the site? The yeah, site. Um, it's interesting. When they decommissioned the Nike bases, of course, to, they, they had to take all, uh, all the warheads separately uh, and deal with them through a separate system, separate physical system, a separate paperwork system and all of that. Um, and there are, uh, you know, I, I guess there are uh, some dozens of missile bodies left that are on exhibit at various places. One is at Fort Meade. There's a bunch at SF-88 in San Francisco and uh, in various museums, but there are Nikes that are still being used elsewhere in the world. Okay. They were used in Okinawa, they were used at various places where the United States has overseas bases, in Holland and in other places. And if I'm not mistaken, I'd have to check this, but I think there are a few Nike missiles still around the world. Around. And within the United States, are they open to the public? So I can go see... Uh... The one at Fort Meade, if you get the right um, permission to come on the base through the Fort Meade History Office, uh, you can see them. And they have great collections there, and they have great stuff at Fort Meade. Wonderful people. Um, and uh, the one in San Francisco, is a fully restored Nike base, so they've got everything there. And you can go tour the whole multi-acres of it, wow. which is all the radars yeah. and the buildings and the launchers and the uh, missiles and, and all that sort of stuff. Um, I don't know uh, how they deal with uh, either, the frag either the shrapnel warheads or the nukes. Um, must have been put through a disassembly system, presumably. There are classified uh, museums out there for this stuff.